Hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in again for another weekly update on news and information about DCS World. I'm your host of course, Prickly Hedgehog, and as always I do hope you are doing well wherever you're tuning in from today. Let's dip into this week's news from Eagle Dynamics and a couple of other little surprises that we have for you this week as well. We'll start of course with the fact that there was no patch this week for open beta. No surprise, of course we are in the holiday season we're only a few weeks away from the end of the year, so we're running really out of time for any major updates, but I would expect probably maybe a patch sometime in December. And of course, we're getting geared up for some revelatory end of year 2022 and beyond type video from Eagle Dynamics. So they'll be busy working with that and wrapping up things as we move into the new year, which I think is going to be a good one. In part because of the focus of this week's newsletter, and that is the overhaul of the AI flight model, which I think you should pay attention to and sit around and sit through this because this is some exciting stuff. Now, what are they talking about? Well, it starts basically as follows, beginning with a little bit of a development history of the flight model that they have in the game. Now, initially, they said they used a trajectory model called the Standard Flight Model, or the SFM, and this was for the human players in the game, and they had a very simple model for the AI, which basically used what they're telling us is primitive laws of physics. Eventually, of course, things evolved, and they developed the Advanced Flight Model, or AFM, and its successor, the Professional Flight Model. These were developed, and then the Standard Flight Model was adapted for the AI aircraft. So as, you know, the players got some goodies, then that trickled down in part to the AI. Now, although the Standard Flight Model produces pretty accurate trajectory parameters, such as turn rate and specific excess power, flight envelope, etc., Apparently it suffers from a lack of natural short period movement and switched models for ground and flight, according to ED. Now this might explain some of the quirky behaviors you've seen with the AI over the years, such as things like bouncing and close formation and other, you know, odd bits and pieces of behavior. Now, according to the team, they've given us a warning here that as much as we'd like to see it, and others have also pointed this out to me uh, in a video that I did about using the AI for BFM practice, or target practice, depending on your point of view, expanding the use of the professional flight model, or even the advanced flight model for the AI aircraft, basically isn't a smart thing to do. It's not a practical implementation, if you like, for the AI because of several key factors. One is that uh, it requires substantial work to create in each individual aircraft flight data models. And furthermore, the processor workload for runtime data in the mission would be excessive and it would greatly affect performance of our rigs, especially when many different aircraft are present in the mission. So it's just not a practical thing to implement at this time. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if uh, multi-core adds some enhancement to this aspect or dynamic, it certainly won't solve it, obviously. We're talking way too much number crunching for the home computers to basically do. But even for boost to the professional flight model, for example, would be beneficial, I think, for you know essentially speeding up and improving the way in which the calculations can occur by better interaction with the hardware that we currently have. Still, and nevertheless, ED explains that the approach that they have with the new general flight model will deliver accurate AI trajectory performance and copy the, uh, the professional flight model's short period characteristics from the player controlled models that we already have. The GFM pilot, inverted commas, will use the same control surface deflection as the PFM model and can naturally stall and spin as well, which is a critical component. The GFM also experiences air turbulence, and it's interesting to note that the short period characteristics of the new models are also uh, naturally dependent on Mach numbers. So a lot to unpack there. Basically, we're gonna see a lot more realism, at least even in aesthetic terms, but also in real world terms, uh, for our interaction with those uh, characters, if you like, um, in the game, which is going to be immersive and more realistic as a result of all of that. Now, what they're telling us also, though, that they had a great challenge here when starting the work on the GFM, which was creating a unique multi-level autopilot system capable of controlling any and all aircraft. Unlike the standard autopilot programming approaches, which demand that each aircraft be adjusted individually, the new approach permits automatic use of aircraft flight parameters. 
This saves substantial time and delivers more accurate and realistic autopilot behavior, something I was kind of alluding there to before, that is particularly appreciated for transonic and supersonic regime changes, which now no longer require substantial tuning, which is awesome news. Now, the fundamental work required uh, about two years of programming, as mentioned, with the formation flying component alone requiring an additional five months of intense development. The main task was to teach the AI to fly correctly, but not as a supernatural drone, rather as a human pilot would, including things like micro delays, errors, and limitations. So every pilot can now practice the formation lead role and develop highly realistic skills without having to play online and depend on, therefore, an adequate wingman and the AI to hone this talent, which I think is a significant and very, very important change to the game. What they also did, and this is part of the work that has been going on, is that all the ordinary tasks, such as takeoff, landing, aerial combat, ground strikes, and bombing were also entirely rewritten. As I said, the implementation of all this is expected sometime during 2022. We don't know exactly when. Whew, that's a lot to unpack. To me, this is probably one of the more significant and important changes to the game. Obviously, it's a massive bonus to uh, solo players, excuse me, and will bring a massive boost in immersion for those single players looking to enjoy campaigns, uh, campaigns, excuse me, and even the developers of those campaigns looking for less wooden responses from AI aircraft. I think that's very, very significant, not only just from an aesthetic point of view, as I hinted at before, but also from a immersive realism to have that option when you don't play with other players, um, you just don't have that time or whatever it is. It's just gonna bring the game to life. And I suspect it's gonna benefit a lot of people and the Eagle Dynamics team when it comes to the the dynamic campaign portion, which we're still waiting for, and we're still really largely in the dark about where that's at. So I think, again, this is a massive update to a critical and core feature of the game, and I'm very interested in what your thoughts are about this. I think, as I said, it's a huge immersion leap, which I've hinted at across um, a variety of scenarios. Like I said, the dynamic campaign, the missions and the campaigns particularly, and as I mentioned, of course, those campaign developers too are gonna to benefit from this. I think they're gonna be able to do a little bit more than what they have been able to do in the past, particularly with the flying, you know, ferrying from one point to another where you're often in a close formation. That kind of thing is gonna be a little bit less wooden and more practical. Now, there's no doubt multiplayer provides the best interface for realistic experience with other pilots, but there's still a lot of mileage, as I said, in the solo portion of the game, which as we know, the majority of players are for a variety of reasons. Now, I love my multiplayer um, experiences with the Air Warfare group, and it's uh, I wouldn't exchange that because I think it's very, very valuable, but I can see the benefit of this in so many ways, especially, as I said, for solo players. And of course, even for enjoyment, I, I still love going back and playing the campaigns and revisiting things because it's a lot of fun and some of the stories are well done. And, you know, that's cool. So very, very interesting. So again, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. I think it's game-changing stuff. And in conjunction with things like we saw over the weekend, uh, last weekend with the dynamic weather coming in, improvements to multi-core processing, all of these things when they come together, when the stars align and all of these things come together, I can see this being one of the, even though it is right now, one of the most fantastic flight sim games out there, this will really be head and shoulders above everyone else in terms of combat. I, I mean that genuinely, and I have to applaud Eagle Dynamics and the work that they're doing. I know they get a lot of sticks sometimes, and people complain about stuff, and we, uh, you know, we get upset sometimes when, you know, um, modules are delayed or maps are delayed or things don't quite work out as we expect them to. But when you look at some of the work that they're doing and the progress that they've made over the last couple of years, particularly. We're really heading into a nice direction, and I think that's something to look forward to. Keep that in mind, you know, um, when you get frustrated about something, because we are on a very positive path overall, aside from some hiccups now and again and some frustration, but we are moving, I think, to what will be, especially as hardware develops and uh, the team gets better and we've got these third parties coming on as well. 
we are heading into some really interesting territory with this game. Uh, remember, we've got third parties producing some awesome products and that's starting to expand even more. It's a good time, again, to be a sim pilot, I think, so stay tuned. All right, let's move on to something just as important and that is the hind update as well so they're making progress here on the new mi24 pilot which apparently is going smoothly now we have some screenshots here of the flight gloves and a soviet navigator's watch now apparently these were produced in 1976 the first moscow watch factory the Polit watch factory began production of a new stopwatch the navigator chronograph model 3133 this model was produced in limited numbers for the military and sadly is currently not available for sale probably can find them somewhere for a price uh, anyway uh, we are also modeling the s4u rescue parachute designed for pilots with a total mass of up to 120 kg the parachute is immediately deployed after separation from the aircraft during horizontal flight at speeds of up to 400 kilometers an hour and altitudes between 70 meters and 4,000 meters. When I thought about this, I really had trouble picturing somebody separating from a helicopter at any of these speeds and uh, altitudes and uh, without getting chopped to pieces by something whizzing around them. Uh, if you have any thoughts about how that works, I'd be interested to know because I just could not get my head around how you bail out of a helicopter like that with uh, with a parachute that immediately deploys. Um, I could be missing something there but let me know what your thoughts are if you can help us out there. Maybe somebody with some knowledge in that area can build the picture that I'm missing because uh, all I could see was disaster. Anyway, I digress. The autumn sale. Hey, don't forget, to, I just actually purchased the JF-17 Thunder. Is that what it's called? Yeah. It is, right? The JF-17? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been meaning to do this for a while, and I've I, I been hankering to buy this aircraft. I've heard a lot of positive things about it, and I thought, okay, it's on sale. Let's buy it before I miss out, because I'm going to forget, and I want to miss out on uh, just trying out another aircraft, seeing how it compares to you know other things that are out there. It's an interesting thing to me, so uh, there you go. I, I purchased something. Don't miss out on your favorite aircraft. If you've been eyeing one up or hankering for one, remember... Uh, a large portion of the game is free to play, and it's a good place to start getting to grips with what's on offer, but at some point you'll probably want to branch out and explore a full fidelity module. So getting one that's on sale is a really good idea, and you can start immersing yourself in the complexity of the numerous modules that are available from ED, and of course also third-party developers, ranging from, of course, World War II aircraft to jets across a wide genre of errors and of course as i mentioned before helicopters even so there you have it now last bit of news here i did see some interesting snippets from rasbam they produced a couple of uh, images of the landing gear for the mig 23 no idea where they're up to in that particular aircraft it's always nice to see some updates of some kind pretty detailed modeling too of course and as we expect from even the third party developers some pretty decent material being produced for the game so stay tuned of course on that i'm looking forward to more work that they are revealing on that f-15e and of course that south atlantic map hopefully it's not too far away and as mentioned the mig 23 so stay tuned now i had the good fortune of talking to juice from the air warfare group yesterday and he has advised me of some pretty cool news that they have been working with the developers of TACView to create some new symbology for BFM-based uh, conflicts, if you like, or um, either training, of course, or, you know, um, 1v1 BFM stuff. In this case, the cone symbology is what we're talking about for the control zone has been added. And this references, basically, if you're not familiar, a 20 to 40 degree cone, something around 1,500 to 2,000 feet rear of your target aircraft. Now, this is the place you want to be, even if you're not technically able to deploy your guns or missiles, because it essentially means you're dictating or controlling the flight, hence the control zone. Uh, and when you're in that zone, you want to be there so that you can get your 
uh, kill as the flight wears on or fight wears on and hopefully that's not for too long if you're in the right place. So we'll see how that develops and of course if you're not familiar with TacView I thoroughly recommend you do take a look at it and I'll try to put a link in the description below. It is available to download for free and use. Obviously a license is going to unlock more valuable features for you but as I said it is an invaluable training tool for budding virtual pilots. It really is a must have and it does capture your various flights for later review and of course dissection which is highly beneficial as you start to develop your situational awareness and aircraft handling skills. This will help you polish up some of those issues that you might be having as you're yanking and banking rather than using a little bit more finesse. So again, I do recommend it. As I said, I'll put in a description, uh, at least a link in the description below for you to peruse at your leisure. So again, I thoroughly recommend it. Really good tool. So that pretty much sums up uh, this week's newsletter. I want to thank everybody again for tuning in. Don't forget to check out the other link I'm going to put in below, uh, below which is the uh, video from Eagle Dynamics this week showcasing some of the physics stuff that they were talking about and they've been using this MiG-29C, uh, which is interesting in its own right. <laughs> yeah, so we'll see uh, how the implementation of this new physics system begins and what effect it has on our immersive experience sometime in 2022. So again, let me know your thoughts on that. And yeah, that I guess brings us to the end. So I just want to thank everybody, like I said, for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Of course, it helps the channel chug along. It's so important. We're doing quite well. We're getting close now to the 7,000 subscriber mark. So help me out. We're getting there. Uh, it really does help, it really, really helps get the, ch gets the ch uh, channel, like I said, chugging along and helps with that growth. And of course, it provides me with a little bit of extra exposure and gives me more incentive to continue bringing you as good a quality of videos that I can bring you within my confines of time and monetary budget. Uh, I am very, I'm a single studio right now with some input from other people, but uh, I do have some changes uh, planned for 2022. Uh, hopefully those will come to fruition so expect some more you know some more things coming here so we'll leave it at that well stay tuned for 2022 I'm hoping it's going to be a good year all right once again thank you all take care carry on flying we'll see you next time this is Prickly Hedgehog out